Alrighty, welcome back everyone. So we're just going to continue on with a list of components that we need to calculate for the 120 watt power supply project. So a quick snapshot of where we are at. Take a look at the schematic. So the last video we covered the output diode and the next thing up on the list is going to be the output capacitor. So for the output capacitor, just a quick summary of what it does. The output capacitor smooths the rectified output of the secondary side, much like the bulk capacitor on the input side, right? So this should be, again, very familiar. I go in depth, more depth about how the input bulk capacitor works. So if you're curious more about how a smoothing capacitor works, then go check out the bridge rectifier smoothing capacitor portion of this video project series. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on here because we, we want to talk about more about how we actually calculate values for our output, output capacitor, right? So, of course, the major parameter that we care about with our output capacitor is its actual capacitance rating, right? Like, what, is, what, how do we figure out what capacitance we want? So the data sheet gives us this equation. We have C out must be greater than or equal to I out times NPS times V out times V bulk min plus NPS times V out times this constant times 0 0.001 times V out times FSW. Now, in, a previ in previous videos, we've actually seen all of these terms before, uh, maybe except I out, but that's self-explanatory, but I'll cover it in a second. Um, so yeah, these should be all familiar, so I'm not going to spend too much time explaining what they are, what they do, but just know it's like primary to secondary winding ratio, output voltage, minimum bulk voltage, primary to secondary transformer, turns ratio, output voltage, switching frequency of our controller, output voltage again, makes sense, and then I out is our output current, which again is specified by us per the requirements of the project. So we're just gonna plug all of these numbers in. So we have an output current of five amps. Again, this is a value that we chose. We didn't actually solve for this. We decided, hey, I wanna make a 24 volt five amp power supply. And so here's how we do it. And so boom, five amps. We already know these other values, 10, 24 volts, 120 is the minimum bulk voltage. Again, N24, 24 times 110 kilohertz is our switching frequency plug all that in, we get a C out that needs to be greater than or equal to um, 1,262 microfarads is what we're looking for here. So um, again, it needs to be higher than this. So find like a nice even number that's above it. I don't know, like 1,600 microfarads. Um, I don't remember what value I end up choosing, but just make it sufficiently higher than that. Um, and also, like, putting more capacitance on this won't necessarily hurt the power supply. Um, we can talk a little bit more about the fine technicals of the behavior of it, but if you, you know, throw on a few extra, if, if you overestimate the say you put something like 1,800 or 2,000, you'll probably be okay. Um, but again, we'll go and we'll, we'll talk more in depth about, you know, that, that's more of an advanced engineering topic, right? Because we're just trying to get something that outputs some power for us, right? This is only our second power supply project. Um, so we're still like developing some of our fundamental design skills. Um, so like I said, you pick something that's just a little bit higher than this value. And then of course, the next value we care about is the output voltage, right? So um, just make sure the rated voltage is greater than the specified output voltage. So this should sound like a lot like the voltage rating of our bulk capacitor, of our smoothing capacitor on the input, right? So we know that our output voltage is specified to be 24 volts you know, per hour decision as I've said many times before. So just make sure your voltage rating is greater than 24 volts. Um, one thing I will also comment on here that I should have put a note on, and this is one thing you'll learn about um, when you just get more practice sourcing components, but um, as you probably hopefully know, like, so this video, this, this channel assumes some basic electrical engineering knowledge. So I don't, I don't cover like fundamental uh, circuit component behaviors or anything like that. Um, so you should already be familiar with the fact that capacitors in parallel, their capacitance is sum. For example, say I wanted one 1200 capacitor in series is the same as three 
um, capacitors, three 400 microfarad capacitors in parallel. So I'll say that again to make sure it's clear. One 1200 microfarad capacitor in series is the same thing as three 400 microfarad capacitors in parallel, right? So what you can do looking at this capacitor, right? So here they have one output capacitor that's 2200 microfarads. So what this can really be comprised of is just two 1100 microfarad capacitors, right? So you just put two in parallel right here. So one right here, one literally right next to it, wired the same exact way. And so this is just a technique you should be familiar with because it, depending on, again, this is, goes into advanced topics, but depending on some of the desired behaviors or desired characteristics of your power supply, um, picking, you know, arranging your capacitors that way could make sense. For example, off the top of my head, one thing I can think of is that say a when you get um into whenever you're sourcing say you're sourcing a capacitor that only has a you know 24 volt uh you know it's voltage rating is 24 volts trying to find something that's over 1262 mics might just be a little bit challenging right it might be really expensive to find something that that fits this voltage rating profile that has the desired capacitance, but maybe you can maybe you can find a whole bunch of 400 microfarad capacitors that have a voltage rating of 36 volts or something, and they're just they're cheap, right? And so that would that would that would meet our requirements perfectly, right? So say you had uh, four 400 microfarad capacitors that were rated at 36 volts, that would easily meet the requirements that we wanted to, right? Um, now the downside to this could be that maybe your your PCB layout now takes up a little bit more space because instead of one capacitor right here, you now have four. So there's like trade-offs. So again, this goes back to more like a, an advanced topic that you'll you'll pick up after you design more and more power supplies. But just depending on some of the as you get more and more constraints on your project, like let's say product is like, okay, we need this power supply to be as small as possible. Then you might have to go pick that really expensive capacitor that has a you know, voltage rating of only like 36 volts, but it has 1600 you know, mics of capacitance or something like that. Um, so that's just another thing I wanted to talk about and maybe I'll cover it. I'll, maybe I'll make another video series. You know how I like to just make up video series on the fly. Like I swear every video is a different video series, but um, and I'll, maybe I'll talk, talk more in length about, you know, better, how, to, how to better understand the components you're choosing and just techniques, tips and tricks that I've learned from my experience just working as an electrical engineer, what I see engineers around me doing um, in their designs. So um, that's pretty much where I'll leave it off on this video. Um, we're making great progress on this. Um, please drop a like if this uh, video was useful to you. Um, that really helps out my channel a whole lot. So I'd really, really appreciate that. And um, if you wanna see more videos like this, um, just subscribe to stay up to date because I'll be releasing, you know, I'm going down the, I'm just, I'm going to show you, this is from idea all the way to manufacturer. It's, it's kind of this series. Um, so we're going to show you, I'm going to show exactly how like going all, I've already covered videos. There's a whole bunch of videos that I've already made in this series, but um, we're, we're going to show you how to design the entire power supply, literally from idea to manufacturer. So subscribe if you want to stay up to date with that stuff. And I really appreciate you making it this far. So uh, thanks.